Well, might as well, eh? That's that's the plan. Hey, everybody. Uh, this is While I Talk. I'm Dan. I'm Ron Burgundy. That is not Ron Burgundy. You're not nearly as handsome in, as Ron Burgundy. <laughs> I have a, I have many leather-bound books. <laughs> now, uh, I'm Will Noor. Uh, this is While I Talk. Yeah. We're uh, coming from a couple different locations. We found the hard way that we can't be next to each other anymore and, and do the podcast. Not like this, anyway. Uh, we, yeah, we spent like four hours on location trying to get this to work. And it turns out, no matter how sophisticated the technology, we're still two very dumb fishing guys. You know, it's, it's, it was pretty frustrating. I uh, I had a pity party and was real down on myself. But uh, good thing is we can try again. So we're doing it again. I'm in my boat. I'm in the Musky House showroom for this episode. Um, had a little bit of work done, just the finishing touches on the boat done at the Musky House here. And then uh, you are where? I'm at my, I'm just in my house. I'm sitting in my boat, uh, just getting some maintenance done and uh, I think I'm going to try and go crappie fishing. It's a pretty great day, man. They boosted the highs for the last three days, like, considerably. Yesterday was 65 degrees up here, and the ice disappeared real quick. Most of it, yeah. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. Uh, I'm sitting at the Muskie House because they're, they're, uh, they definitely support the podcast and our businesses. Um, I, my new boat came through the Muskie House, and we both are – running warriors they're also a port a doc dealer another supporter of the podcast so um doing a bit of an advertisement for them because they've got a, a lot of good products and they support our business and uh and the podcast so thought it'd be a good time right. to do it on on location here right um we also want to talk about a little bit uh this episode about minnows uh the availability uh, and so on uh we're also going to talk Dan and I in the last week and a little over, uh, I've been out turkey hunting. Yeah. And we got some pretty good stories we want to show share with you there. Um, and then maybe our opening plans we'll go over. Um, yep. Ice off crappies, what we can do. And a uh, little bit more about opening day. Are we two weeks away from opener right now? Today is two weeks away, yep. It kind of sneaks up on you these days. This one seemed to have just got here super quick. I think part of it is, uh, well, I don't know. Yeah, it, 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 it snuck up on us. And I, there's so many fun things to do this time of year that it's kind of hard to choose uh, what you want to do, you know? Oh, yeah. And generally, you know, at this time, at this stage of the game, we've already been up to the Rainy River for a couple days. Yeah, right. Um, you know, so we're behind the eight ball as far as getting our boats ready because we've lost out on a or we missed out on a, on a nice opportunity to get out and have some fun. Right. But now we have like plenty of opportunities in our back door. You know, there's plenty of open water. Um, I have had this thing out a couple times now. Um, More than just with G-Man in the driveway? Yep. We actually ran the, the real Suzuki this time, and he preferred the sound of that a lot. More <laughs> than my boat noises. Oh, man. Um, yeah, it's nice to have some time to just like not worry about catching a walleye like Nick Parent brought up he's like when you first have that thing on the water you're not supposed to fish and it is a lot easier to do that when the water is like 42 degrees so, <laughs> right and, and you have a seven month old with you know I knew I had a pretty limited time to, to try things out for the first day and uh, yeah good maiden voyage so I was thinking instead of taking a break why don't you go ahead and show everyone your boat and maybe take a little tour of the, uh, the old Husky mouse there. All right. Um, let me see how I'm going to do this. Changing apparatuses. Can you hear me just fine? I can hear you just wonderful. All right. So the, right now the, the camera is right in the middle of my boat pretty much. So, Here's the, the captain's seat. That's going to be my view right there. Just that, take a nice pause. That take thing, a look at those screens. I'm going to have 
just mark after mark after mark, hopefully. <laughs> uh, some of the finer details, I don't know if you can see it that well, but they put, um, like not only do you want the graphs to be secure and not bouncing around, but uh, it's also nice to have them look good. So I put this black tracks tech um, track system in, and then the units are mounted on Cisco mount systems. And I'm actually gonna get uh, a little tool holder for right underneath there. So I think that's gonna look pretty sharp. 200 Suzuki, um, Warrior has their own steering system so you can put these big tillers and you're not um, committed to just one brand. You know, Mercury has been the brand that you can run. Uh, they've got their own power, power steering system, but you can put a Suzuki or a Yamaha or an Evinrude or whatever you want on these because they've got an external power steering system. That This is a, a Warrior product. So you actually steer the outboard with this little toggle switch right here. Um, and those Suzuki's are just such a, they're such a good motor. Yeah, I mean, I was hoping for bulletproof, right? Like that's kind of what I was going for. And um, I think this is gonna be a good fit. Nice big casting deck there. Ooh, that's spacious. Drill a hole in my boat. I put this cup holder here. Put two holes to put that cup holder right there. <laughs> how, did, how did it feel drilling holes into your fiberglass? Nick, like, Nick was coaching me up on, like, exactly how to do it, so it, it didn't feel too terrible. <laughs> All right, behind me there, that's uh, Jack's demo boat. Jack's demo boat? Yep. And uh, so he ran that for the 2019 season. He's a big Lake of the Woods fisherman. You can see the downriggers on the back there. It's got a 300 Suzuki. Um, that thing is the big water boat, in my opinion. It's the No kidding. Warrior 208 thing is just built like a tank, and uh, I know it's seen some rough water already. Um, but that was you know, a demo boat, so if you're looking for a value price on, on a nice Warrior boat that's just got limited hours on it, uh, that one's for sale. Watch this. This is actually pretty, like, lifelike, dude. I am stepping onto a port of <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it. <laughs> is that pretty sturdy? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Real comfortable. Real sturdy. Uh, they're a port of dock dealer, so you, they can build your dock for you. But they've got a lot of products in in house right now too. And then they're a premier. Are you sitting on a bench. Team. I'm sitting on a bench. Yeah. That's got nice. Couple, premier pontoons, like top of the line pontoons, super luxurious. I can see a rod holder in one for that guy who thinks he's going to fish out of his pontoon with eight kids. You know. <laughs> There are certainly trips where I think, like, man, a pontoon is a better fit for for this particular group than than uh, any fishing boat, you know. Especially those trips we get in July where we're fishing weed lines. Right. Oh man, a pontoon would just wreck them. And they these guys do all the rigging, and they're like pretty darn good at the rigging. So Nick told me that most of the talents he's put on boats have gone on pontoons. Guys who just want a good <laughs> good anchor system don't want to mess with an anchor. Yeah. So, like, I think he's put pounds <laughs> on, and seven of them have been on on Premier Pontoons. <laughs> oh. And then they also have a brand-new 2090 for sale. Woo! Yep, this one's got a 225 Merc on it. Um, Is that a Pro XS? It's a Pro XS, yep. They did a little demo drive. They had it on their Facebook page, the Musky House Facebook page, and I think they were seeing 53 miles an hour with Jack and Tony in the boat. And, uh, that's just crazy yeah pretty impressive full shot this is the same color scheme as mine it's just got a different um, different accent color that thing is it's got trim tabs on it it's got the mercury power steering seats uh it's got a step ladder up on the front which is a nice feature that you can add to the warrior trailer and then it's ready for however a guy wants to put whatever he wants to do for electronics and drone motors and stuff they do all come from the factory with Vantage, like that's, if you're buying a 2090, you're gonna want a Vantage, so they just put them on everyone. Um, Optima, or they carry interstate batteries and Odyssey batteries, two pretty top of the line batteries. Uh, Odyssey is, is probably right at the top of that list. Lots of marine accessories. The showroom is new this year. They redid it over the winter, so it's in pretty good shape. Uh, they work on, 
Yamahas, they work on Mercury's, they work on Suzuki's, and then they've got, um, they work on ATVs and sleds too. I don't know if everybody knows that, but they do a lot of work on um, anything you might need for cabin life, you know? Question for you. Will they work on my push lawnmower? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny uh i think the answer should probably be no i don't know i bet you could maybe sweet talk nick into it but if, <laughs> if it, i had him i've got a mechanic buddy up here who uh, my dad uses him to fix everything and he wanted my dad wanted him to fix like a popcorn maker or something i'm like dude have a little bit of respect for the guy <laughs> you know he, most of the time he's wrenching on tractors and stuff, and then my dad wants to bring a popcorn maker. In. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, one, one more plug for this place is the reason I, uh, besides carrying real high-end products, you know, that this is the boat, the dream boat I wanted to end up in, their rigging services are top of the line. Nick Parent, who's uh, one of the mechanics here, he, he doesn't fish very much and he knows more about birds and Lorances than most of the fishing guides I know, you know, and not yeah, only how, he to does. Have, but how to have them mounted correctly. So I definitely think it's one of the parts of the job that from here on out, I'm going to outsource to a dude who knows a lot about it, you know. I'm right there with you, Dan. Yeah. I'm right there with you. I am not, so he's not talking very much. Well, I'm listening. You're saying a lot of very important things. Well, it is sort of a weird, a weird conundrum, right? Because the graphs are one of the most useful tools in the whole boat. And there's so much technology behind it now that it's hard to know how, how it all works. Not only yeah. do you, it's not just a graph and a transducer and a trolling motor mounted now, like they, they link together, they talk to each other and uh, all of that stuff is, is pretty confusing so i think it's a job that i'm going to lead the nick from here on out and i can just worry about using them on the water so the with that being said like the technology is far ahead of the average fisherman at this point you know yeah um like i mean just look at us i mean we've had side image but we've never used it to its full potential and we may never be able to yeah yep I already, the, the second day I had this thing out, I had to restore the factory defaults on it because I was pressing buttons that, you know, I didn't know <laughs> what they were doing. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a pretty good thing that, uh, like, Hummingbirds got built in is that they will, there's, it's just one button and it puts you back to square one. And square one is, is usually pretty darn good, like good enough, you know. Aaron Weeb did a video on, uh, on a Hummingbird where he took it right out of the box and fished with it and it was ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yep. So that's the boat. That's the showroom. Um, like I said, Warrior Boats, Premier Pontoons, port -a dock best rigging service I know of around. Uh, stop on in. Um, that's, that was great. Thank you, Dan. Yeah. It was nice to see that. Um, so what's the ice look like everywhere? Dude, we lost a lot of ice yesterday. The, the high forecasted yesterday, I think, was only 54, and I mentioned it got up to 65, and everything on Facebook was about lake after lake going out. So from what I heard, Woman Lake is out, Little Boy is out, Wabado is out, anything smaller than those is, is out, and there's lots and lots of open water on Leech, but I don't really know exactly where. Do you know like what parts of Leech are, are opening? Well, I got, I got to talk to a couple people today. And that east shoreline up by Sugar Point and north uh, up to Five Mile, that, that was pretty, I mean, there was a little little open water in front of their shoreline. But he said it was ice as far as they could see still. But, you know, it's seven miles across the bay. Yeah. So uh, it's not uncommon to not see it open water. Uh, but the south shore, that's all opening up. Yeah. Uh, the Portage Bay, that's getting wide open. So. And it, we're, we're getting days where like not only does the heat build but then with that the wind builds up in the afternoons mm -hmm. um, and so i think every every evening over the next couple of days we're probably going to be making big progress what what's your guess for leech like when's it going to be when's off? my yeah uh four days four days 
Yeah. Yeah. At, that's yeah. Four days. I, I, had, I had a buddy coming up uh, to put a dock in out there on May 1st. And I told him he was probably going to be in luck unless he was unlucky. You know, I think there'll probably be a bit of ice around, but uh, depending on what the wind does, I think May 1st we'll have ice out. So then we got ice out for a week and a half before opener. That's Which is pretty, pretty good timing as long as that water gradually warms up. We don't right. want it to spike. We don't want it to drop. We just need it to gradually warm up. Right. Yeah, I was talking about my opener plans with Holmgren, and um, we might be camping out uh, just to, to, for the logistics of, of a large group, larger group fishing that weekend. And uh, I was like, yeah, when I was writing it out, I was like, I think I'll just sleep in a tent. Uh, it was 65 degrees out, but rarely is open or 65 degrees, you know? Oh yeah. Generally it's blowing and cloudy <laughs> and, right. you know, some years we get, get pretty lucky with the weather and it's nice and sunny and warm, but that generally, they, it generally keeps that for the next weekend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is fine. I'm fine being in a boat on opener if, if it's miserable. It doesn't seem to matter that much that, that particular weekend. No. All that matters is the fishing. Yeah. What's your, uh, what's your plan for opener? You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend my time on leech. Uh, usually I go to a little lake on opener this year. I'm like, well, I kind of I want to go back to, to my stomping grounds. You know, usually I, I'll go there maybe the second or third day. But I really wanna, I really wanna play around in the shallow waters, especially with ice coming off right now. Those fish are gonna stage in that, they're gonna be in that real shallow water, and where my mega imaging is gonna really come into play. And the guy I fish with Mark and I have came up with this plan where we're gonna throw plastics um, and body baits, and we're not gonna bring any minnows. So we're we're pretty excited about that. We've kind of already got a little bit of a game plan. Is that, is that a high tech easy shiner? It is. it is. Oh man, that looks good. I think I'm. I hope that's going to be what catches the first one this year. Are you? Uh, are you throwing that on braid this year? Or are you going to throw it on mono? This one's on braid. That's what I'm going to start with. Yeah. That's what I'm starting out with too. I just put on some new. I just put on some nano fill for, especially if I'm side imaging and I see some fish a ways out there. Uh, I want to be able to reach them. You know. Sure. Especially if I'm fishing against Mark, I want to beat him real bad. So if I can reach him and he can't, <laughs> uh, I mean, he's not. So you're going to just hold the boat like slightly out of Mark's reach? from Yeah, the... let's say he can cast, you know, 50 feet. I'm going to make sure those fish are 58 feet. <laughs> Mark's crafty, though. He'll figure something out, dude. I know it. He'll put like a three-way rig on or something like that or put an inline sinker in or some stupid. Yeah, he'll be like hand-lining them below the boat. <laughs> uh, I just can't wait. I cannot wait. Um, what are you going to be doing? You're going to be up on Cass? I'm going to be on Cass Lake. Yeah, last year, if you remember, my plan was to not fish the old reliable stuff. You know, we were going to try uh, fishing a different part of the lake. And yeah, you you fished the spot where there was 41 degree water temps. <laughs> just, just found the, the refrigerator of the lake. Uh, and then ended up in finding warmer water and having a pretty good opener. This year, I think we're going to just stick to the the old stomping grounds to start with. And um, selfishly, like I'm doing that, so I have a good place to test my electronics, you know. Um, and then uh, then we'll go exploring, I think. But yeah. you're gonna that's mostly you're mostly pitching up there, aren't you? You're doing a lot of casting. Uh, not, not always. No, I'd say, I mean, we found a good pot of fish in like 16 to 20 feet last year and we would just, we were just vertically jigging those fish and they were super active. There's not a lot of rock on, on the part of cast that I fish and we found a little rock pile that had a bunch of fish that were roaming. And as soon as you could, as soon as the graph would light up, you would catch a fish. But then, yeah, we, I, we caught the majority of them pitching, um, new growth vegetation in seven to 10 feet of water probably sounds pretty convenient yeah like that's straight out of the old playbook right yeah you know what to look for warm water new growth cabbage yeah but you sounds know like you figure that one out like i i kind of hope that uh the week after opener I, I have something to say that didn't line up with my expectations you know fish finding fish somewhere they weren't or 
having a hard time getting particular fish to bite and then figuring it out. You know, I don't, you don't want it always to be a, a handout. Right. Otherwise you'll never learn. Yeah. Right. But oh, yeah. also it's a couple of days where it's exclusively just fishing for fun for me. And, uh, there's long days in May. You are going to be on the water the majority of the day and gives you plenty of time to try something new. Even if fishing is good with the, you know, if they're biting a jig and a minnow, get your, get your hook sets in and then, and then try something. New. Do you find yourself trying way harder when you're fishing for fun? Like in, on an individual standpoint, than uh, if you're fishing with customers, you mean like my particular rod, like, yes. Uh, it depends. See, I was talking with Lee about you and uh, like one thing I've, I've uh, learned about you is that you'll have like internal com uh, competitions happening and you won't even tell anybody else about it, but you have a, you have a competition going. Always. Which is why you're probably trying really hard when you're fishing against your buddies. Cause you oh, yeah. You have, you were talking about buying a clicker. I'm sure you're like keeping track of your number versus Mark's number the whole time. And Mark, he's kind of wired to do that, but I think he'd probably do that with people who have no idea that they're participating in a competition. <laughs> um, yeah. Would that be true? I know exactly what you're talking about. I remember, I know exactly the day. <laughs> I know exactly. Uh, we were perch fishing. Yeah. Yep. And I was like, how many do you guys got? Right. And you had like two more than me. I was like, oh, yeah, that's exactly what you were talking about. I remember. Cause you were asking, you tried to be all sneaky about it. You're like, well, what, what'd you guys end up with? And I knew right away, like, dude, he's for sure is just competing against us. And we didn't even know. I thought you'd never see it coming. I thought you'd never see it coming. They're going to fall right into this. But if you had, even if you had beaten me, you would have just been like, oh, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. You, yeah. wouldn't even, you wouldn't have even told me that we were in a competition. That's because it doesn't matter that much to anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I mean, sometimes it's, I mean, I find myself being a real douche sometimes, but I try to be real modest and I try not to, to brag too much you know but sometimes you just can't help it sometimes you just gotta let it fly yeah yeah i hear you um on that same note what about what about the minnows um so as it sits right now malax is open and people have shiners shiner traps out okay. um but that's not the case on red red is locked tight uh there's a little opening in front of the river, the Tamarack River, but the rest of the the rest of the lake is super tight. Um, that's going to change here with the weather that has came in, but uh, it, it it's going to be iffy if minnows are going to come from there. Luckily, Mille Lacs is open now uh, because now we can start stockpiling some minnows because minnows you catch right now are going to like if they catch them today, they'll survive until opening weekend. Because the water's so Howdy. cold. We got to pause for a sec here, Will. Yeah, because you know what the difference between juice and sauce is? What? You drink juice real fast, but sauce is always savory. You know, <laughs> lasts a long time. <laughs> gotcha. All right, we're back in action here. We're live. We're live, yep. I got a question for you, Dan. You ever jig with your 6'6 six, six mediums? Um, actually, that's what I got that plastic rigged up on as a medium. I'm doing it. I think it's 6'9", though. Okay. I was just curious, because oh, I know you're a big... This is exactly what you just described, 6'6", six, six medium, fast action. That's what I'm just rigging up right now. Oh, it's a jig wrap rod that I converted to a, to a jigging rod. Nice. That's what it is. Nice. I, you got a little red reel on there too? Yep. I got the same thing. Nice. Nice. Um, um, minnows. You were talking minnows. Mm -hmm. will, um, you, will you do the whole minnow update one more time just in case I got to get fancy with editing? Yeah. So red is froze over. 
which is where uh, the majority of our minnows generally come from. Our spot tails. Correct. Um, but it's locked up. Red's locked up tight. It will be for, you know, probably four or five days, um, which only leaves a week for them to trap it, you know, before opener. Right. Um, so that might be a little problem, especially with just minnows coming from up there. Um, but Mille Lacs is open, and Mille Lacs can, you know, especially if they can get on it now, can supply the whole state with spot tail shiners. Is that right? Um, yeah, it can, yep. Especially wow. if they start now. Because uh, those minnows are hardy right now. They're pre-spawn. They're just going in there to get warmed up just like anything else. Sure. So if they are up there and they're able to start catching them right away, we'll, we'll see shiners on opener. We'll see an abundance of shiners on opener, at least for that opening weekend until red can get going. Well, that's uh, pretty good. Like pretty good news, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I, things are optimistic. Things are very optimistic. Um, what else? Uh, rainbows are going to be big because we have high water. Uh, they're going to be plentiful because we've got enough time for them to warm the ponds to warm up and catch them. And goldies should be prevalent. We should have good sized goldies if we do have a, a spot tail shortage. Uh, and we are always going to have fat heads and crappie minnows, you know? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you know what leads to every once in a while we've had openers where there's just like jumbo fat heads around? I have no idea what causes that. It's uh, it's just a genetic through the, you know, for the pond. So, you know, they must have terrific genetics just like anything else and it makes <laughs> so it huge. Must come from Fed Dam then, huh? Must be. Must be. <laughs> so we just had an ultrasound yesterday and... Yeah. Uh, Little baby newer has got, uh, it, it's growing. You know, it, it's two weeks ahead of the rest of the body. It's head and its feet. Very big. That's a newer genetic right there. <laughs> it's very huge head, big feet. That's a newer, that's a newer baby. <laughs> we got to wrap this up. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Tony's in there though. All right. All right. What else do we got to, go, got to cover? Uh, that was minnows, turkeys. Turkeys. Tell Dan, me, tell me about there. your turkey. Um, huh? Yeah, my, my normal turkey hunt, which is usually a down south turkey hunt, uh, got busted up. And so I had to hunt the north woods. And, uh, you poor guy. Right. It's hard, to, it's hard to get outside your comfort zone. And it's, it was pretty different, in my opinion. Uh, hunting yeah. southern birds and hunting birds up here but I had I, I had found quite a few birds I had uh one of my scouting days I was uncomfortably close to a town I was uh, <laughs> six yards away from a town the night before I was planning on shooting him and that was like you don't need to be that close no uh, you just need or they kind of are not exactly where they are right right uh so my my first morning hunt uh I also that same hike I busted like six birds out of roost that were like that was unfortunate because I wanted to they were real close to where I had planned on setting up for the first morning and uh classic Minnesota guy busting roost <laughs> right but you usually you can see them from a long ways away down in southern Minnesota up here you you can't so anyway no, you... uh was feeling just a little down on myself and um had a couple birds close, close, but not close enough. And they, I was certain they were using private land. So I had pulled, pulled my decoy, pulled my blind and was moving, walked maybe 20 yards and the bird gobbled. And I was like, well, that sounded significantly closer. And then I called and it cut me off. Like, well, these, that's a things, good sign. Things have improved tremendously over the <laughs> this 20 yard hike I took to reposition. And uh, so, uh, called one more time and he was for sure coming like knew he was either by coincidence or coming to the call he was making his way towards me so I just sat down right right where I was then you know didn't have uh, the chance to sort of carve out a comfortable spot to sit didn't feel great about my my location which was 20 yards away from where I'd been sitting for the first hour and a half of the morning which was like primo and uh saw the bird for the first time like 120 yards away on a on a trail 
or not on a trail, on a field edge, and called one more time, saw him gobble on the, on the field edge, and then he just was sprinting at me, just <laughs> running, running through the woods at me. And one of my favorite things about turkey hunting is how it can go from, I think this is true of most hunting, you know, it can go from slow, nothing's looking good to like all of a sudden you have, you know, things are speeding up real quick. This is happening. Yep. This is happening. So he ran like 60 yards right at me and then he stopped and, and strutted and gobbled. And then it like, if I learned anything about this particular bird is he didn't really want to make his way through some heavier brush. So he skirted uh, to the north of me just a little bit and ended up coming right up the corridor that I thought they were using to go from roost to the, to the field where I was set up in the morning. And uh, he disappeared for just a second. Uh, and, I, and I thought maybe he didn't like the sound of my last call. But then I, I called one more time and he gobbled and he was like right on top of me. <laughs> just like that. Couldn't see him, but then he like, just slowly made his way up over a rise and I shot him right where I'd had my decoy set up. So it was probably 26 yards away from me. I had my decoy pretty, pretty close to where I was sitting. And uh, yeah, so first Northwoods turkey for me. And uh, I walked out my door to, to hunt it, which was, was pretty fun. That's pretty convenient. Yep. And I hunted a season. So I froze my butt off the first couple mornings there. Yeah. It was 10 degrees or something like yeah. that every day. Yeah which is not what it's been in Southern Minnesota. Usually it's like 45 for a low. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was great. Uh, I liked, it'll be interesting next year what, what I can do because I really wanna, I always like hunting with my buddies down South, but the shooting ones up here is, is fun too, so. Oh man, and they, they talk and talk and talk some of them days. Yeah, yeah. How about you? You hunted the bee season, right? I did V season. You hunted with me the first day and we went to the spots where I'd found him before and we never heard a gobble. Right. Uh, it was windy. It was not very, I mean, it was 30 degrees. It was nice and warm out, but nothing was working. So we, you know, walked a few trails, tried to call when we were walking and nothing, nothing, nothing. Uh, saw, uh, we saw, <laughs> we saw a woodcock <laughs> in the ditch. No, it started out on the middle of the road doing the woodcock dance you know <laughs> doing the the real the pelvic thrust yeah right that was pretty sweet it was great. uh <laughs> and then i came back that area probably an hour and a half later and that bird was in the same spot we left it <laughs> doing the same pelvic thrust i was like this dude is is got the stamina of a champion <laughs> just pelvic thrusting like crazy just what everyone is, inspires to be you know yeah um but anyway, day one sucked, other than the woodcock. That was pretty fun. Uh, we had uh, a raccoon growl at us. Oh, yeah. We did that, too. We uh, That raccoon that we treed. Um, but the next day, I didn't have a better plan, so I just did the same thing. I went to the first spot, nothing. Went to the second spot, which, you know, it's I just sit on top of this clear cut and listen. And I heard this bird way the heck back there so I was like okay so I drove my truck down and parked in the parking area and I started walking and I walked like five minutes and I called and nothing nothing I was like well what the heck did I turn this bird off so I keep walking I walk probably another three four minutes and I stop and I call and I can hear it and it's still way the heck back there um so okay so I'll just keep walking as so I walk quite a ways farther and I got to this straight stretch of road that's like 50, 60 yards. And I get the old slate call out and I do some whisper, some sweet nothings. And uh, yeah, so I whisper some sweet nothings. And the bird just goes on fire. I was like, holy smokes. But he's still a long ways back there. So I just kind of, I get up to the edge of this trail and all of a sudden he gobbles and he's right on top of me. I'm like, what the heck? So I take a step into the woods and I no more than kneel down and get the gun up and the bird gobbles again and he's right there. Like I can't see him, but he's right there. Yeah. And he takes one step out and he's on the far side of the logging road. I am one step off the road and I blasted him. <laughs> uh, nine and a half inch beard, beautiful Tom tastes delicious 
Nice. Yeah, you ate it that morning, didn't you? Didn't you have uh, turkey? Oh, yeah, breakfast? dude. I love turkey. It's like my favorite thing. Nice. Yeah, very nice. Lots of, lots of successful hunts happening up here. Oh, yeah. The, the it's, it's terrific. Yeah. Good, good springtime tradition, for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, well, you know, I'm going to go do it today, but uh, I need some advice, Dan. I'm going to go for some crappies after the ice goes off here, after the ice came off. What, what should I be doing? Uh, I always like just said when you when people ask about spring crappie fishing I always just talk about warm water and the characteristics of of a lake and a part of the lakes that warm up fast and that's usually uh, north bays you know that they they're getting more sun exposure this time of year and if you get big large expanses of shallow water specifically shallow dark water you know so not shallow sand you're looking for shallow mucky bottom um, and if you've got any vegetation that's lived through the winter, uh, that's, that's a bonus. Looking for warm water. And I think one thing that I, I've done in the past wrong is my first couple times out there, I look real shallow. I look in water where I can see them, you know, like yeah. three, four feet. And uh, usually the first time out there, that's too early. I think when you're dealing with water temps in the low to mid 40s, it's more like six to eight feet is is probably where you want to be looking for fish and then I and just, they'll be halfway down the water column yeah off, they do some weird stuff this time of year you'll see them just like suspended they're almost they don't move at all you know i think their bite windows are if they're gonna feed are pretty short they're usually in there for different reasons besides eating you know they spent they're they're kind of like winter fish they still spend a lot of their time not not actively hunting right. you know, doing other stuff they're on autopilot and then the evenings especially you'll start you will see them start uh showing up on the surface and um that's that's when i've had my best luck and then i just do i just fish them with the slip bobber for the most part and i like buying minnows so slip bobber and a crappie minnow <laughs> yeah i don't blame you there it's one of my favorite things and you're going today that, that i'm that's gonna cool. go today it's way too nice out yeah way too nice out so I think Plus, I, I, want to get the boat, I want to get this boat out and running. Let her rip. Not Let a lot of docks in. I feel like that's worth noting. And it could be, could be, uh, I don't know. I hope there, I hope all the docks are in, but there's not a lot of docks in yet. And with the current events, you know, our, we live in a different world where usually you kind of take it for granted that docks are going to get in within a week of open water might be different. So have something worth checking out, you know whether it's a right. phone call or whatever make sure you're, the dock you plan on using is in or you can do it do it safely with the wind you know that you can get your boat in without a dock right i'd, I'd had waders in in the back of my truck for that particular reason just because I, I wanted to, to get out there and i wasn't sure what the 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 situation was going to be at the landing was the dock in when you went out no okay no. first time out was a little stressful, right? Brand new, unscratched boat, no dock, seven month old kid and a wife. Dude, that is a recipe. Like on the drive there, I was like, let's, let's do this and let's, uh, it'd be real great if we could not uh, scratch the boat and if we could not end up in a fight at the end of the day. Like I, that, that is a win. Right. And we did it. That was a successful trip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, with in spite of the or despite the current events, openers still a go. Fishing yep. is happening. Bait shops are open. Minnow trappers are still out there. Right. Marinas, marinas are open. You know, Muskie House is open and and can work on rigs. They can put docks in. Um, so the the infrastructure, a lot of the businesses around the fishing industry got the green light, which is a right. good thing. And I know like fishing isn't, isn't like the most important thing in life, but I do think that fishing leads to uh, a little bit of normalcy, a little bit of peace of mind, you know, some serenity. And I think we all can do with a little bit of that right now. So I'm, I'm thankful that it's, it's has shaken out this way that we're at least out there. We get to be out there. Right. So am I absolutely right now a day where you can just think about catching fish and, and talking with your your loved ones is a good good day 
you know that's a terrific day yeah so well i think that's a wrap huh dan i think so i um that's all i gotta say we still have t-shirts available <gasps> the t-shirts yeah yeah we've, we i mean last week sold or last episode sold quite a few t-shirts for us hoping for the same this week um uh, we should mention the t-shirts uh, earlier in the episode that's true next time next time um yeah get yourself some t-shirts uh then go fishing then go fishing go buy go buy some stuff from your local bait shop and uh and go fishing absolutely uh thank you very much for listening to while i talk i'm will newer and dan ryan we'll see thanks you. for listening